Welcome tonight to Exploring Art Mediums. Tonight we're going to be painting our Halloween truck full of pumpkins and we're going to make a little blue truck and it'll be fun. We're going to practice our calligraphy, watercolor calligraphy, which is really fun to be able to mix the letters into one another as they run into each other. And that's the beauty of using watercolor. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera and we'll get started. This is going to be an easy painting. And, okay. So I don't know if you guys can see my lettering. If you don't wanna say Halloween, that is just fine. You can do, um, here's mine that I did just the other day practicing and I'll do better up here. I kind of spilled, but we're just gonna mix, see how we go start with rust and it goes to orange, then it goes right into the blue. And we want that wet spot, that wet, H to go into the blue A. So our letters are gonna meld into one another as we go. So let's get started with our letters. First of all, we're gonna take a small brush. Just, um, this is a number five. You can even go as far down as a one and still be able to do it. And we're going to wet our rust and our orange colors and get them uh, vibrate, vibrant, ready to work. And then we also need to wet the blue-green and the Prussian blue. And if you've got tube paints, you don't have to do this step. We're just waking our hard pan up. Okay, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna start by wetting the, the, just the letter H and where it connects into the A, okay? <clears throat> now this H little trail goes all the way across the whole page. So we're gonna start with kind of a orange and we'll go back and make it darker if we need to. But because you've wet it, it's gonna follow down and you can help it by painting that. And I might zoom in just a little. And I'm gonna go over to my rust and come down. And then I'm gonna start doing the cross over. And the paint just kind of blends because it is on that wet surface. But we can go back and make it more darker, more definitive if we want. Fill in spots where it's missing. If you guys want a like an orange, more of an orange here or more of an orange on this one, you can add orange on top. You can add more orange here. I'm gonna just kind of square it off. And I have to play with the ends with a paintbrush because the letters aren't, with a brush pen, a felt pen, you have a little bit more control. The paintbrush just doesn't give you the same control, but that's kind of what I like. I like the looseness of the paintbrush. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush out and I'm gonna pick up the green, the blue green down at the bottom here, this corner. I'm gonna pull this in so you guys can see right here. And I'm gonna come across and finish this off. And hopefully it's still wet enough to run. I might have to encourage the running a little. I might come back with a little bit of rust to make it blend a little bit more. Okay. And make sure you unmute yourself if you have any questions. So then we're gonna 
switch to a blue A. The next one is blue. You see that right here? We're gonna go ahead and do this blue A. It's really blue green, but I don't know what I'll end up calling it tonight, blue green. And we start with an oval that comes in thick on the downstroke, and then it gets light on the upstroke, thinner, I should say. And then we make the end of it like that, the straight line. And then we're gonna bend it up into the P. That's where it sits. Okay. So then I rinse my brush and I go back to my rust color. Oh, I just dragged that through that. Oh, I'm so sad. Oh, well, this is my practice one, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna take that down, that P. Now you can make a little loop if you would like. I'm just gonna leave it square. I'm gonna come around. And then I'm going to go up to the next P. Okay. Now the first part of this P is rust again, and then it switches. So we're going to stop at this downstroke. And then I'm going to switch over to a blue for the loop, the blue green. Just remember your downstrokes are thicker than your upstroke. I don't know how I'm gonna get that off. I might have to paint a pumpkin there or a leaf or something to disguise that mistake. <clears throat> you can go back and make it a little darker if you'd like. And then I'm switching back to rust for the Y. The downstroke is wide. It's gonna make the turn and be thin. And then I'm going to switch about right there and do orange in the rest of it. That upstroke is supposed to be thin and my brush didn't let me do that. Okay. Okay, moving on. We're gonna start the Halloween. Now the Halloween is a lowercase h. And so again, we're going to do the green, blue, green. And as you come around, you're going to make it thick. I need to get more paint. And this one I didn't wet, did I? And you guys can decide whether you like the letters wet or not, um, kind of thinking, I like it just putting a wet paint on dry paper. But if you want the real runny look, then go ahead and do that. We're gonna come up with this H and come down and come back up. I'm gonna switch to rust again for the A. Thick down stroke to the left and then back up thin and then thick on the right hand side. I don't know what you call it. The stem of it maybe. Okay, and then we're gonna go right into the L but the L is gonna be orange. This first L is orange. So I'm just gonna show you real quick. So 
we've got the rust and then we're going to go to the orange then we'll do a blue the second will be the blue green okay so to do now you start at the loop and you come around and go flat and then come back out of it you lift as you come back out now i can see my pencil marks so i'm going to go over that a little bit make it darker And then I'm gonna do a blue, a blue-green L. Now my I've got it my right in the middle of the P. It's gonna kind of get in the way. So I'm gonna move it over just a bit. Now I can hear the wind chimes. The wind is blowing. We have a, uh, Tracy, we have a, our first cool down. So today is our first actual fall day, if you want to, <laughs> really. We've been having such hot weather. Okay, this O is going to be rest. We're going to start on the left-hand side, right in that, where the, it connects with the L. And we're going to let it run into the L and come back up narrow, and then come back thick, and then go back up narrow over to the W. Now the W is going to be orange. And on the, on the end of the W, we're going to make a loop. And my, the tail of my Y got in the way. So try to fit your, your loop in here. This almost it needs to be bigger and over here more. This almost looked like, for one, it's hitting the, the Y, so that's bad. But it almost looks like you're trying to make another letter right there. So you want to go up higher and down, if that makes sense. Not as big as, not as tall as an L, because then it, you'd be confused that it might look like an L. And that is orange, right? So we're going to go in with the orange, oops. I still had rest on my brush. We're gonna come up thin. We're gonna come down thick. And then come up. Okay, here we go up to that loop. I'm just gonna go up high like that so that you know that it's just the W that's ending. Now you could kind of be, get fancy and loop it in with that Y tail if you want, but I didn't want to do that. We're going to do blue green for the E. I really need a thinner brush. This is getting frayed with all the, <clears throat> with all the, dipping into the rinsing out actually it's a really poor quality brush it's the ones we use for summer eating so okay so we've got a turquoise let me move this over back to a rust e and then an, an orange n Okay, and then we're gonna stop, we're gonna do the tail of the N, and this didn't bleed very well. We're gonna go from orange into, into the blue-green tail. So we want it to mix a little bit more than, than I have here. So for orange, I'm just gonna stop. I'll show you, I'm gonna stop right here. And then I'm going to add the green tail.
And again, I want it to bleed and blend. So I might come back in with a little bit more orange. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the camera while we finish. Okay, so our next step will be taking, we're gonna be painting it in parts. And the reason we have to jump around is we have, we're gonna be floating. We're gonna do a wet on wet so that the, the colors bleed and it's really pretty. So we can't do two that are right next to each other right away. So we're gonna get started and we're gonna paint the brown Wood. Well, let's get started on one of the blues. Um, let's go ahead and do this bumper down here, the rear bumper, okay? This will give you an idea of the kind of colors and what we're gonna be doing for, for each section. We're going to be, and you can add a little bit of your Prussian blue into this if you want. Um, you can like just do a dip into the Prussian blue. Uh, oh, I forgot, we need to wet it first. You're gonna wet this whole bumper. Or it's a fender, I guess, right? The fender. I don't know my car part, the fender. Okay, so then it, it when it's wet, let me get the camera so we can see better. Now I'm gonna just drop color in there and see what happens and just let it go. And I'm picking up a little bit of blue to make it more of a turquoisey color. Then you can spread it out to where it gets the whole car. This is the same technique we're gonna use on all the sections of the car. We're gonna wet it and then we're gonna drop this color in. And it's a mixture of blue and green. Okay, so here is the important step. We want a reflection on this fender, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up, I'm gonna clean off my brush just on my paper towel and I'm gonna sweep I'm gonna sweep over that to pick up some of the color. So watch what I do. I'm gonna come in here and go like this. You guys see that? And it just made a highlight. That's all it's doing. And it'll come back in, um, but it wants, it's just showing a curve. It's helping it look like a curve. And you can kind of help it in a way it just shows a fat part of the curve. And if it's too much, you can go back and add a little bit more back in. Okay. So let's jump over and do the other fender in the front. Again, we're going to wet it. And your brush doesn't have to be completely clean because you're going to go in that same color. You're going to float the water through that whole section. Okay, and then I'm going to drop it in. This is a bigger area, so it's gonna take a little bit more painting. I'm gonna pick up the blue and add to it, a little bit of the Prussian blue. Okay. So then once I've got all the edges to where the color's good, 
I'm gonna dry off my paintbrush, just put, put it on here. And again, I'm gonna swipe around, okay? And maybe even swipe up there a little. I tell you, the more you play with it, the more you might ruin it. <laughs> Just kind of let it glow. I might put a little bit of water in there to just make it flow again. Okay. I'm gonna leave this alone, move on to a different section. Okay. I think I put a few too many brush strokes on that other fender. There, that's better. You want to you want to pick up color, but you still want it blended smooth because it's supposed to be shiny metal without any dents. And so you need to make it look like it's one piece and just barely highlight it. Okay, so now we cannot paint next to that for a minute. So um, the next area I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go around the door, up to around the top of the window and back down again, but not the center of the door itself. So again, I wet it. And I'm gonna dr drop green and blue in. And we can also pick up some blue and put in there too. Otherwise it won't match the, the rest of it. Okay. And then there's a little bit on the top that you want to highlight. Not a big spot, but just a little bit up here. I'm just picking up a little of the, a little of the blue green up at the top. Okay, so now we're going to do the back side of the truck, okay? Um, when we do the door, make sure that you leave this, the handle so we can go back and paint that silver. On the truck, it's just the same thing. There's, we're gonna treat these two sections as one. So you can go up all the way across with your wet brush. Actually, you can go right next to the door. We're gonna treat these three sections as one and then we'll highlight them separately. And I think that will uh, be good. Okay, here we go. We're gonna pick up blue green and then we'll pick up some of the Prussian blue. I'm just gonna go and, and paint all the way across. I wanna make sure, and see it's a very different tone, so I'm gonna go back and add blue as I paint. I'm not worried about mixing it ahead of time.
Once you've got it covered with color, we're gonna do a little bit of a highlight because there's three parts. Remember, there's three pieces that we're doing in here. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush this time and dry it off. And I'm gonna draw right across the top because I want that highlighted. And then, what did I do over here? I'm not sure I did anything else. Oh, then we can kind of um, just scoop around. And it really isn't a highlight so much as just, I want that to stay darker. Just to show movement. Um, this piece, we make a, a dip right here. So maybe I'll take that and make it lighter. Okay. And then we're ready to jump over to the, the hood of the car. So we'll go ahead and wet that. I'll take my blue green. Add my blue to it. Okay, so then this one does get a nice highlight on the top of the hood because that's a part where the sun shines, I guess. So I'm going to just go in pick up some of that color. And you guys can't see that. It looks just like a watery reflection. So I made the top a little bit lighter than the bottom of it. Uh, I might have made it too light now. There we go. Okay. And then our last blue is the door. So carefully do your water around the door handle. And then fill it in. Too green, I need to add blue. And then we're going to go around the whole thing. And then lift. We're, we're going to lift kind of in the middle. So we're, we're drying off our paintbrush. And we're just going to pick up a little bit in the middle. 
let the excess kind of flow back. Okay, we did the whole thing. Okay. Okay, so next we're going to just do the wood panels that are across the back. And the easiest way I found to do that is just to kind of base it, do strokes to make it look like it's wood grain. And, and the way you do that is with the raw umber. And you're going to add a little black on top of it. So we can just do some strokes in here that are a little variegated, not filling it in completely. And then we'll go back over with some, a darker brown black mixture. Now there's up right up, uprights, I guess, posts in this wood that you need to paint that connect to the truck, keep the fence, basically a fence. Okay, so there it is pretty much based in. I've left some white spots, I haven't done a solid. But now I'm going to take my raw umber plus, plus a little bit of black. So I'm just dipping in my raw umber and then I'm just going over to my black and picking up a little bit of black. And I'm just going to fill in again, just spots. And by doing that, it makes it give it a wood grain. Oops, a little too much water. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. Did I see that better? I do it like that. So while we're waiting for that to dry, because we can't do anything. Oh, you know what we do? We can do though, while we still have brown on our brush is paint our stems. So let's go ahead and just paint the stems on the pumpkins. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the black now. We're gonna start with the gray, pretty much. Um, this window, let me show you on here. Do you see how we're gonna go around the whole window with black? 
but we're gonna, it's gonna be wet. And, um, and then we'll do the line down here. So we're not gonna fill the window with just water. We're gonna paint the black and then draw the black out by going over it. So go ahead and wet your brush with black. And we're gonna outline the whole window. Don't worry about the downs, the, the line. We're gonna do that later. Then I'm gonna wet my brush. I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm just gonna come around and draw that out. Does that make sense? It really worked over on that side. It's a little dry on this side. I'm gonna add a little bit more wet. Okay. Then in here in the middle, you're able to draw the line down. Get a good fine flat line. So it's a little bit of a variegated window, kind of um, just to make it look a little hazy in there, if that makes sense. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with the running board. I'm gonna take that same black and I'm gonna go across. And I'm gonna take a darker black and just line the bottom. And let it run up. It's just fine if it goes up into the, the door. Okay. Then I'm gonna take that same black and do the tire. Whoop, whoop, there we go. So I'm, I'm just gonna take the same paint that's on my brush and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do this cross hatch in a tire. And then I'm gonna do a black line all the way around it. It also has, this is exposing the underside of the car. So I'm just gonna put a dark black right at the top. That's not part of the tire the under part of the car. Okay. And it doesn't really have it, I guess it does have it just a little bit in the in the other tire. I'll show you. It just has one little piece of it right there. Okay. So just take your black, your dark black, and go right there. Let me balance back out so you can see both at the same time. You can jump over to this other tire and do the same inside black. Cross. You may as well do them at the same time. Then we're gonna do a line around it. Okay. 
<clears throat> this tire, these, these tires, you're going to wet a little bit. You're just going to take your water, come a little, fill it in just a little bit doesn't have to be exact because you're going to go over the outside edges with a, a strong black. But right now you're just going to fill with, just let it flow. Just dip your brush into the wet. It's going to come all the way up to that line. And like I said, you're going to go out and around. Okay, so I'm going to get a good, maybe cream consistency, and I'm gonna outline this black. And it can run in. You just wanna let it flow. So I'll do an, um, kind of a, I'll do it larger on this one so you can see. So I'm gonna wet the tire area with my dirty brush. And then I'm gonna go back with the black and drop it in. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna outline the black tire over on the right, the front tire. Okay, cool, all done. While I've still got black on my brush, I'm gonna do my tail light, front, front lights and tail lights. So it's just a, a little half moon, half circle shape right here at the front of the car. You see that a backwards C, that's all. And then at the very back of the track, it's the same thing, just in reverse. And then it has a little square at the bottom. Okay. So again, a little C for the front light and a little C. Uh, oh, I guess it's a C here. It was a backward C at the other and then a little square. Now this tire looks really weird on camera, but I'll tell you it is filled in just normal. I think it's just the reflection of the light. So we are ready to work on our pumpkins. Okay. Our pumpkins are gonna be three colors. They're gonna be orange and you're gonna do drops of yellow in them and then drops of rust. So maybe the lines, the indentations of a pumpkin will be, you'll do some definition with the, the rust color. And then you'll do some yellow at the top where it's highlights, if that makes sense. It's kind of all three colors for our pumpkins. So they go, and it's just however you've drawn them, they're all different. 
I am going to start with the yellow since it's the lightest. And I'm probably just going to drop yellow in on the tops of all of them and just leave it for a minute. It looks like my I still got black in my yellow. And while it's still wet, we'll come back and put more color on it. And you can dot down below, but really it's going to be other colors. The next color I'm going to do is orange. And that's going to be the majority of the color. So my pumpkin's going to come around here. Leave some of your yellow showing, doesn't have to be completely covered. Down below, you're gonna like through the pickup truck, keep, keep thinking it's, it's round shapes. So it's like the bottom of the pumpkin. Because we're gonna go back and fill in the void with black. The yellow can be covered up it, with it being under there. It just gives it a brighter orange, really. Go through all the slats and do kind of half moon shapes. Okay. It doesn't take a lot of effort to get that filled in. The last color we're going to do is the rust. And this I'm just gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna add lines. It might not even show. Um, and it's still wet enough that it's gonna blend in. Okay. And look at the shape of your top of your pumpkins and see if you need to go around the stems a little bit with the orange or, or dark orange to fill out, fill it out. And remember, I said that we we're going to do some shadow in there. So I'm going to take my black. It's going to be kind of a dry brush because I don't want it to run into the orange. But I'm just going to fill in little gray, little gray spots in between the pumpkin. Okay, that one's too dark, so I'm just gonna dab it. Too dark. Okay. So 
The last step, there's only one little last step and it's the shadows that we're gonna put on the truck itself. So right now it looks like the truck is floating and we want it to be a little bit grounded. So what we're gonna do is take a light gray, just really dab it off lightly. We're gonna just come under the car and do a wipe right here. I just stayed underneath the back bumper, back fender. We're gonna come around the tire and do the same thing. And we're in the, we're in the white space. And I'm just adding shadow underneath the running board all the way across. underneath the fender and not on the back of the tire so much as um, the front of the tire. It's just got a shadow right there. Oops, that's a little dark. And I'm gonna bring that same shadow around the front bumper all the way around I know this sounds weird, but you're gonna go up and around the light too, and all the way up, okay? So it ends, it ends at the top of the, let me just not, I think I'm gonna pick up some of it. I think I got it a little too wet. Okay. And that's, oh, and then we have to paint our doorknob. Our, so we wanna do that as silver, which is light gray, which is black, but just watered down. And then just do a darker line at the bottom of that. If you need to, you can add more definition to this downstroke, the split window, the fly window. Remember those little fly windows that used to open up? You'd crank it open on the front. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the class tonight. We're gonna be doing a pouring acrylic Ooh. project next month. And Excellent. so we're going to have a kit that will be available for you to pick up at the library. And it'll have some ribbon and some leaves or something, a little wood thing. But the fun part is pouring acrylic paint and letting it dry. So that'll be next right. month for Thanksgiving. And you could probably hang it on something. Maybe I'll include some jute and you can glue it on the back and you can hang it on something. 